Nier Automata released something fittingly weird for this game. You can fight the Square Enix CEO Yosuke, Ma Yosuke Matsuda and the Platinum CEO uh, Kinichi Sato. You can fight them as bosses in this DLC. So this prompted the question, what are some of the weirdest DLC packs we've ever played? Because there have been some odd ones. Are we going to show some of the... Okay, here we go. Oh are we going to get into the actual fight of it? Because I watched it this morning. Look at that. Is this Square or That's Platinum? the Square Enix CEO. So that's <laughs> yeah. <Masuda>. so ridiculous. <laughs> I love it. I love it so Oh, much. he just told me. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, like, they fight with a mix of just, like, hand-to-hand -hand mar martial arts, but they also can emit, like... Clouds of drones that are just their heads, which you can see right here. Yeah. Oh my, that's what we need. All right, but have you guys played much of this game? Because I know that it's said time and time again that despite the slew of awesome releases this year, this game is fantastic. I played, yeah. I was just telling Rob before the show, yeah. I've been playing a lot more of it, like between Persona 5 bouts. This game is really, really good, and all the weird shit in it just feels so right for this game. Uh, Yoko Taro, he's done other stuff like that. He did, um, Dragon Guard. Dragon Guard. Yeah, mm. it's like his style, but I don't know. I I don't know if I'll get the time to play this DLC yet. But damn, level eighty five is. I mean, it sounds high, but after playing, <laughs> yeah. so here's Platinum CEO yes. and President. I like how he's just motionless. Uh, he's just just descend from the sky. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Oh, you think at the same that's time. air you're breathing? Yeah, yeah. If you if we stick with this, the fight looks like super just chaotic, and the player ultimately dies in this clip. Stop trying to hit me and hit me. Yeah, you end up. <laughs> some guy was watching The Matrix on a flight the other day, and it got stuck in my head. You think that's a game you're playing? <laughs> <laughs> and then he watched Matrix uh, Reloaded, and then I fell asleep. <laughs> I uh, I stopped using my spare time playing this to try to play more Persona and I'm feeling like, not that that's a mistake, but maybe I want to shelf Persona for now mm. and go back to this game. I, yeah, I'm kind of having that same debate. I just, uh, there's a lot of games at the beginning of this year that are going to take up a lot of time to play. Like, right. I'm still playing Zelda and I, I'm trying to finish that so I can move on basically, but I'm not sure if I want to move on to Persona or to this. Um, and I kind of want to move on to this looking at this battle because I want to fight a CEO's head. <laughs> is this <laughs> in game? Like, uh, this, this is seems so like it's ridiculous. Like an arena, like dungeon. Type. Yeah, I okay. mean, uh, judging by how, how the rest it. of the game is structured, it might just be something you travel to in the open world. But yeah, like you said, it just seems pretty basic Coliseum kind of thing. But yeah, this is one of those games that, uh, I mean, Goop, Goop, <laughs> Goop Shoe Riot in the Twitch chat was just saying it needs to be in the Game of the Year discussion. I totally, I mean, I know it's only, yeah. what is it, April? I know it's only April, but this is definitely one of those games that I don't want to let get overshadowed by all the other f very fantastic games coming out this year. But I don't think there's any question it's one of the best out of the third of the year that's passed. Mm. <laughs> yeah, and it's great for Platinum because they've kind of had a, a rough between, uh, we talk about this all the time, Scalebound being canceled on Xbox One and also the last release I think was TMNT, mm. Turtles in Manhattan, oh, Mutants in Manhattan. I always forget the name, but I didn't play it. Uh, anyway, yeah, so we wanted to talk about other weird DLCs we have played throughout the years because there are, there's quite the plethora of them. Uh, the first one I want to talk about, and it's quite popular, is Undead Nightmare for Red mm -hmm. Dead Redemption. Uh, essentially, did you guys play this? Nope. No. no. Okay, yeah. Well, it essentially just kind of <laughs> reskinned Red Dead Redemption and put zombies on it back in the middle of the zombies' heyday after like Left 4 Dead and Dead Rising were huge. Um, I liked it. It was... It was self-referential. Is this even it? I think this is the <laughs> Bigfoot. Like big I'm okay with this. Yeah. Uh, oh God, I, I feel like that's my spirit animal right there. <laughs> I feel like that's you. Yeah. That's yeah. That's your Patronus. Yeah. This this six is that shooter. You on the right. <laughs> yeah. I'm <laughs> just I'm John Marston with a six shooter. I'm just a silent hairy man sitting against a tree. <laughs> Uh, Make it. So, Go ahead, kill me. <laughs> so anyway, zombies. <laughs> like one of the more, like some of the more, um, I don't know, some of the bigger DLCs, Undead Nightmare actually kind of went back to reskin much of Red Dead Redemption and place Undead in this world and kind of told this story. I forget <laughs> what the actual justification was for it, but it What is, is a man? <laughs> <laughs> you think I don't exist? <laughs> How are you so sure you exist? <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> Maybe we're all Bigfoot on the inside. <laughs> what is he saying? Uh, <laughs> such a model. So, yeah, Undead Nightmare. Oh, Undead eyes. Nightmare is probably a good one to get into. Uh, another one is Enter the Dominatrix. 
That was that clip showed nothing of Undead Nightmare, but just More imagine for DLC. B-roll. Imagine <laughs> zombies in Red Dead Redemption, and that's Undead Nightmare. <laughs> oh, uh, here we go. John Luke is he's back at it. Uh, Enter the Dominatrix was originally teased in April of 2012 as an April Fool's joke DLC for uh, Saints Row Three. It was never finished, <laughs> uh, and then it ended up being released as DLC for Saints Row Four, and I didn't really realize how weird it was until I finally played it like two years ago. Uh, I think it released, it must have been... Yeah, yeah, I yeah, get it. Very, very sex-tinged. Uh, but there are these cutscenes. It's very self-referential. They talk about... It's kind of a uh, parody into what it's like to make a game or how games change along the way because there are these live-action cutscenes of <laughs> developers from Volition acting out the scenes really? uh, that they didn't have time to finish. But they kind of... Like, stuff like this... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they don't. They get into like how it was. It started as an April Fool's joke, and that people wanted it, so they it fit into Saints Row. So they just, yeah. I kind of want to play this. I, it is. It's very good. It's kind of a cool. Like I said, it's it's all satirical about maybe not DLC, but just how games are made, and it's really funny. It's, yeah. It breaks the fourth wall every which way, and it also calls itself out when it is not in like canon or when it breaks congruity with the main game because mm. it's like a parallel storyline. It's really good. I like super want to go back to Saints Row Four now. Just that so I can fun play as it that. is. That's like in the yeah. vein of Just Cause, kind of that dumb open world fun. Uh, in Saints Row, you're, Saints Row 4, you're actually like a superhero. That whole series evolved so weird. The first one was kind of more grounded, uh, gritty, uh, like almost like, you know, chasing after the GTA vibe. Yeah. But then 4, they just developed their own weird, crazy identity. And Enter the Dominatrix seems to be like the apex of that. Guns. Yes. Yeah. Um, Volition now is working on Agents of Mayhem, which has a lot of... <laughs> The same flavor from... That's my Patronus. The boy's getting married. <laughs> <laughs> this guy. I was going to say, where's the other raptor? Oh, my God. Oh, no, that's me. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, that was Enter Dominatrix. Uh, more recently, I want to talk about Resident Evil 7's DLC. They've mm. been pretty... Been releasing a lot of DLC like right after it came out, which I think served it well. It had a long tail as far as beating those huge releases. But here's birthday party. That's um, weird. Um, so when you're talking to weird. Jack Baker and he, it's this is the more comical one. John Luke I know played through the whole thing, but uh, based on the other DLC that I played for this game, I didn't get the chance to play birthday party, but it did look super weird. I think John Luke and Joey streamed it at some point. Um, and even the enemies, <laughs> yes, he's got like confetti. It's like grunt birthday party from Halo. <laughs> I was almost. gonna say it's <laughs> yeah. like grunt birthday party, but it's got all the molded enemies have birthday hats on so if you're scared of this game this is probably the way to play it right <laughs> i guess so I but mean, i don't know this scares me more i was gonna say really? this is pretty creepy I don't like clowns oh this totally breaks the like horror vibes no this creeps me out more what? i'm more upset. oh it does not yeah. Yeah. If i am i am upset who paid you to say that <laughs> <laughs> liar Stop capcom lying. there's someone <laughs> behind a camera here in, i just capcom. no uh, but yeah, outside of the <laughs> got full on. Outside of the birthday horrific, party DLC, horrific. You should definitely, if you are a fan of Resident Evil Seven, play the DLC they've released. Uh, there's a lot of cool stuff they do. The, the escape rooms with Lucas, um, and they kind of, you know, you can go back through Madhouse difficulty, play in VR. This game is fantastic. Also, game of the year contender in my mind, even though it's only April. But eat a pepper grinder. I want to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm not scared anymore. I'm good. <laughs> XCOM Two. A uh, very minor one compared to these, but Anarchy's Children, um, this is just another excuse for me to talk about XCOM 2 because mm -hmm. I, I was gonna say. fucking love this game. I was just playing this yesterday. Rob, you kind of saw me. You might have, but uh, it it takes the idea of what if humans didn't become this just rebellion when the aliens took over and if they became this like <laughs> punk, The Purge is the dumbest movie that's coming to mind right now about the aesthetic with these Mohawks. Uh, I don't know, mm -hmm. just this post-apocalyptic I mean, for lack of a better term, I can't see. anarchy, and you can have these sam the lower face mask part. You can have these samurai like oh my God. muzzles. It's pretty badass, but it I also gets weird one. in the sense that some of the outfits are like these gimp costumes, kind of like these tight leather thing. That one's sick. I'd wear that in real life. Uh huh. Um, there's a lot of mods for this game, so DLC is kind of hard to recommend in XCOM 2 because there's so many mods that are free that you can just play and people have implemented stuff like this, but Anarchy's Children was cool because it kind of lent a lot more color to your team mm -hmm. uh, rather than these just militaristic looking uh, outfits throughout the whole thing. Uh, yes, so moving on to another one that wasn't exactly DLC, but it spawned from another game was Far Cry 3 Blood Dragon, or yes. sorry, Far Cry Blood Dragon. Yeah. After Far Cry 3, this weird project developed became this 80s, um, I don't even know how you would describe it, it's 80s, like, outrun, kind of cyberpunky 
not even cyberpunk. It just took like 80s action movies and made it into a Far Cry. Uh, like a bite yeah, size, like Tron kind yeah, of vibe. Fever Dream. Tron. Yes, uh, with outrun music and shit. It was yeah. really fun, um, and we're still capitalizing on '80s nostalgia. I feel like with a lot of games releases, but this seemed to <laughs> kick that off. Maybe uh, you end up getting a power glove later on. You punch this reactor, to destroy the base. It's really fun, uh, but it's really cool that it developed like that. I think it's like takes 12 hours as opposed to uh, Far Cry 3, which took more of a I don't know 50 hour <laughs> approach. But I just like that it completely changes the themes. Like it's just yeah. a complete switch. Yeah, and I I'm, love '80s. I love '80s shit. So I was like all about this. Yeah, I, it was kind of you know looking back, it's cool that Ubisoft greenlit this. I know uh, that was pretty sick. But yeah, play this if you haven't. It's standalone on uh, Xbox 360, PS3. It's worth playing. Uh, cool. And then I just also wanted to touch more on Call of Duty Zombies. We were talking about it before the show today. Um, you know, as good as most Call of Duty games are, or at least okay. Zombies is always really interesting. It was just Treyarch, but then with uh, Infinite Warfare, it's Infinity Ward's first time doing it, as opposed mm-hmm. to some other, like, wave-based mode. But Rob and I were talking, I forget how many maps there are for zombies. There's, like, 22 or something. 23 there's, with from yes, the whole franchise? Yeah. yeah. Tons. Yeah, and there's, like, a continuity with, like, the, with Black Ops zombies and there's it's like there's a whole it's a whole thing yeah because there's really those deep. original four characters uh, there's a Japanese character a German character and two Americans what that started nah, in a Russian too. Russian it's, and a Russian yeah, oh uh, yeah. it's not Rez, no it's Reznov's later but uh, yeah it was kind of the people that were inc- the, the factions that were included in like the first uh, Call of Duty World mm-hmm. at War and then they ended up uh, they becoming the first one was uh, I think just knocked on Toten Night of the Undead. Mm-hmm. You seem to know German more than I do based on the conversation this morning. <laughs> <And> it was <laughs> nice. nine. Sehr uh, cool. Yeah, and then you know like Der Rise came along. That was my favorite. That's, yeah, the that factory. was mm. that was where uh, yeah I was telling you guys when um, my buddy and I would play till like three a.m. It's like, dude, we have class tomorrow. We'd pause it at wave twenty eight and then go to bed and and try to pick up where we left off and we were just so naive like okay you ready okay on pause dead (laughs) yeah (laughs) because you just you develop such a momentum and a rhythm that you you can't just sleep on it and pick it back up it it, the game is just intense um i would stay up with my brother and play yeah just they're fun yeah and i think uh so what was the previous one black black ops 3 right black ops 3 had like the sort of like Noir. noir. This the, started with the noir one yeah. with uh, Jeff Goldblum was in it. They started getting super weird with uh, celebrity appearances. You hear, is it Danny Trejo or Johnny? Danny Trejo. Danny. Uh, Sarah Michelle Geller. Uh, but they actually started bringing celebrities into it. And but that didn't. It didn't at any point feel like a gimmick because they were just. I mean, it's. I guess it could, but they they're all quality. But here's the the kind of Shino Numa zombie swamp. Mm-hmm from uh, the first Black Ops, or sorry, World at War, where it started. Mm-hmm. But this was always a Treyarch thing, and then with Infinity Ward, or with Infinite Warfare, Infinity Ward took a swing at it. I and think they, they really good. put their own spin on it, because it's like 80s themed. Zombies in Spaceland is super fun, and they're really cheeky. I really like Zombies in Spaceland. Yeah, and uh, for those of you watching this live, like I said, there'll be a live stream later at 2 p.m. Yeah. Pacific. Mm-hmm. Uh, Scott Butterworth and Joey Yee from GameSpot will be hosting and playing with developers from Infinity Ward that worked on Zombies for infinite warfare anyway yeah uh let us know if we didn't mention any dlcs that you wanted to hear talked about let us know in the twitch chat youtube chat hit us up on twitter comment on this if you're watching on youtube after the fact 